everyone, this is Newman here with 910 Air Gun Tuning and Repairs. Today we are going over the crown trigger. I will explain how to tune the tra crown trigger and explain the different parts of the crown trigger so that you can have a better understanding of it. And so whenever you want to adjust the adjustments such as the first or second stage on your trigger, you can do so without having to read a manual or else uh, call up a technician. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and explain the different parts of the trigger. This screw right here, the first screw on your trigger base, this screw right here, is your first stage screw. This screw will adjust how much uh, travel you have on your first stage. That's how far back you have to pull the trigger in order to uh, go through the first stage of motion. The next screw right here is what holds on your trigger wheel. You always want to make sure the screw is tight, but this will not be used for any adjustments. The next screw is, it's covered up by the trigger post right now, but you can see the top of it right here. That is the screw that holds in your trigger spring. That doesn't really have any effect on adjustments or anything like that. Uh, some people say if you screw that screw in, it can increase the weight of your first stage. Um, even if so, it is very, very slight and, and so minute, um, I would not even bother with it. I would just keep it where it is because if you back it out any and you lose that, uh, the, the setting on the spring is very hard to reset that spring onto the screw. Alright, the next screw going down the line here, this one back here, that's going to be your safety screw. You can see it poking out a little bit right there. That safety screw is what uh, engages with the safety on your crown and will uh, help you indicate whether you're on safety or not. If this screw is backed out too far, you will not have a safety on your gun. The last screw here on the trigger base is your second stage adjustment. This is how, uh, how heavy or how light your second stage is or even if you have a second stage on your trigger. Okay, okay so for a couple more screws along the base here, uh, you've got your post screw, which is uh, it attaches the clamp onto uh, your trigger base here. And then another one right here is the uh, trigger blade or trigger shoe screw. Uh, this one uh, holds your, uh, like I said, the trigger blade, trigger shoe, however you want to call it, onto the post. Okay, so that's your trigger right there. Now we're going to go into the different functions. So now to go through the functions. As I mentioned before, this screw will adjust the travel of your first stage. Uh, it, the, the farther you screw this in, the less travel you'll have. The farther you pull it out, the more travel you'll have. Onto your safety screw right here. The more you back this out, the, the, less, the less safety you're going to have and, and eventually you won't have any safety at all. If you screw the safety too far in, uh, you won't be able to pull the trigger whether you're on safe or not safe. It won't matter either way, the trigger will not pull. It'll jam against the safety. Another thing for adjustments is your second stage screw right here. That will adjust how heavy your second stage is. So after you get through the first stage, it will adjust how heavy your second stage is. Uh, it's, it's loaded by, it's a screw with a preset uh, spring and ball bearing. It's preloaded, it, it's, it's in there pretty tight. Um, so basically, if you if you go in too far with this, the trigger won't pull because it'll be bottomed out. If you pull out too far, you won't have any second stage at all. So you want it kind of the middle uh, in order to have a second stage. If you want a second stage, not some some people don't want a second stage, so you can just back that out. Um, not all the way, just just back it out to where you lose the second stage and you won't have a second stage anymore. Um, but in order to have a second stage, you, you want to be sure to find that sweet spot, and you can adjust the different weights with that. Also, the last adjustment you can make is right here, you, the, the screw for your trigger blade. You can turn your blade whichever direction you want. You can go up and down the post. Uh, whatever best fits your finger, it's, it's really an option for the shooter specifically. Okay, now we're going to review this on the actual action and show you how it works. Great, so now we have the action in front of us. So just to show you... If I pull the bolt back like this, I'm going to hold it back just to make sure that it does not fling forward. Just so, it, it, always do this whenever you're testing your trigger, always just hold the bolt back. 
not all the way, but just enough to where it, it, it's past that stage of adjustment. It's not putting any pressure on the hammer spring, um, but it's enough. If you do pull the trigger, it's not going to fly forward, and also you're not dry firing the entire time. So be sure to hold it firm. It does kick very hard. So, as you can tell here, I'm on safety right now, so no matter how much I pull the trigger, it's not going to fire. So I'm going to do this simply just to show you the different adjustment stages. I'm going to go ahead and close the bolt now because like I said, we're on fire or on safe. We are on safe. The trigger cannot fire. So we're using a 1.5 millimeter bit right here. Try to zoom that in on the camera some. Uh, this is your first stage right here. So the more we back this out, you can see the trigger start growing. And the more we screw it in, you can see the first stage starting to shrink. This is because, like I said, the more you back it out, the farther your travel is. So here I'll show you real fast. Look at all that travel. And then the more you screw it in, the less travel you have. Just a little bit. Alright, so that equates to weight. The, the farther you have to pull the trigger, the heavier it is. That's what that equates to. Now, I can't really replicate the second stage while I'm on safety. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip on to the safety screw to show you what happens if I back out too far. So as you can tell, it's on safe right now, but if I go over here and I back out the safety screw, I can pull the trigger and it's going gonna, it's gonna to fire. Just like so. If I go in too far with the safety screw, I won't be able to shoot at all. It won't pull, even on fire. Well, that time it did. I didn't go far enough in, obviously. So if you go too far in, even on fire, it's, it's not going to pull. So you want this in a happy medium to where while you're on safety, it's not going to fire, but on fire, it's going to, it's going to fire. Um, this is very easily done. There, there's a large room of gap in between the two settings. Um, so you don't have to really worry about that. It's just if you can't fire the gun, uh, just double check to make sure that the safety is not too far in after adjustment. Uh, if the gun fires on safety, it's probably because that screw has backed out. So that, that's why. Alright, so the safety is working now, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a 2mm bit for the second stage. Alright, so now I've got the 2mm uh, Allen bit here, so I've, I'm at my second stage now. So we're going to need the gun on fire for this, like I said, be sure to hold back that safety lever so that you don't have any misfires. So normally these second stage screws have Loctite. I've already removed the Loctite off this screw just for the video purpose. Oh, and there we go. It looks like I've lost my second stage. So I'm going to just go ahead and back out there. So if you look, watch here. I never hit, I never stop on the second stage before it fires. That's because my screw is too far out. If I take this. And I go too far in, I won't be able to pull the trigger because it's not going to go far back enough to release the sear off the trigger wheel. So if you do want a second stage, you want a happy medium. And see that's that's still even without the second stage. So let me go in a little bit more. Now it won't fire. So I'm going to do, I'm going to come back out. No, not yet. There we go. First, second. First, second. So that's how you adjust the second stage weight, is that one right there? And this is how you're going to adjust your first. They do kind of work together a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the first stage a little bit. 
You can have a longer second stage if you have a longer first stage. And there we go, we're at the max right there. There we go, that's just about the max right there. You can see how much is sticking out in the video there. Let's see how much we have to come out with it. Or the lose second stage. Oh. So if the threads are sticking out, then you're probably going to lose your second stage, it looks like. So barely right there. I don't, I don't know if you can see on the video or not. It's just enough that I can catch my fingernail on it, honestly. That's all that can be sticking out in order to still have a second stage, and that's such a light second stage. As you can tell, you can have a lot of travel, but you get too far in the first stage. You're going to have a ridiculous trigger, and this is probably going to hit your trigger guard down here. And eventually what will happen is in here you can see your spring. That's attached. They're not attached, but it's resting on the bottom of the sear. You pull too far out on this, and you have the possibility of the spring coming dislodged off of your trigger sear. And then you won't have the return on your first stage. It won't be able to return. And even, even with it stretched out so far like this, it doesn't even want to return all the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that right back on in. But if you have it too far in, you won't be able to cock the gun because it's technically instantly firing. You won't even be able to put it on safety. And that's absolutely the last trick you can get right there. There's no first stage. Or I should say there's no second stage. It just instantly fires as soon as you hit the trigger. So, you want to back that out a little bit. And put this in a little bit more. Yeah, and see it's barely cocking now at this point. And now it won't cock. So this right here is what you call a sticky trigger. And this is just because it's in bad adjustment. It doesn't really want to reset without some assistance. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that second stage a little bit. And there you go. It has just enough now to where it bounces off and you still have your second stage. And it's not going to get caught. Alright, I think I've covered everything in this video now. Um, please give me a, shoot me a comment, shoot me an email, uh, tell me something on Instagram, shoot me a message or something like that. If I've missed anything that you really need me to go over. Um, there is something else uh, with the trigger actually real fast. Um, it, it has to do here with here, I'll, I'll show you an example. Um, normally the, I got this upside down, there we go. It rests just like, well, if I can see, there we go. It rests just like that, obviously with the spring compressed, and it rides just like that. And the sear is caught on the trigger wheel so that whenever you release it, it slides off. Whenever you pull the trigger back, it lets go. It slides right off. So what can happen though is if there's too much meat on one of the two sides, it can get stuck. I mean, when I'm talking about too, too much material on one of the two sides, it's, it's literally uh, thousandths of a millimeter type of stuff. I mean, just insane, insane little amounts. But what can happen is this, the sear might not want to fall in. It might get stuck up here and you won't, you won't be able to pull the trigger. You won't be, um, it, it won't, the gun won't cock or so, or it might get stuck right here. And no matter how much you pull the trigger, it's not going to fire. That can simply be solved by taking a little Dremel tool, uh, with the, the cloth polishing, uh, 
buffer on it or, or just a little bit of um, emery cloth or any any super fine uh, buffing material and just give it a little bit of a polish to this front side right here or to the top of the sear the uh, the trigger sear right here I, I mean my bad the trigger wheel that's the trigger wheel this is the trigger sear so there's just a little bit of emery cloth on either one the two right there and that should be able to help you out that that should solve the issue and and like I said all it is, is normally uh, maybe a couple thousandths of a millimeter if not even less may barely even a thousandths of a millimeter if not even a smaller amount than that is uh normally what caused that issue right there all right so and, and also just a note right here as i told you before it's very easy for that spring to come dislodged off this screw right here so just be careful with that i would not advise adjusting that screw there's no purpose to and also another reminder once again just make sure whenever you are adjusting these screws, if they have Loctite, heat, heat up the screws first. Uh, either do that or else be very, very careful when you're adjusting. You don't want to strip these screws out. If you strip these screws out, it will be very hard to remove if you even can remove them. And you don't want to have to buy a new trigger just because uh, you messed up on your adjustments. Alright, so that's all for today. If, like I said, uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, anything like that, please let me know. Uh, shoot me a message, uh, drop a comment, do something as such. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And uh, hope you have a great day. Let me know what you want for the next video.